A full textual description of this video is linked in the description below. Enjoy! Welcome back to my AMD Geode Repair video series. If you weren't here for the first few videos, let me give you a quick recap. In part one, I bought and did some basic troubleshooting on an AMD Geode computer board. I drew some wrong conclusions and at the end damaged the board with bad soldering. In part two, I spent six hours trying to repair the board. I was successful in the end, but damaged another part later. Okay, we're done. Let's talk about some of the lessons learned. First, make a plan when soldering. Practice on e-waste to see if it's something you can do. Take breaks throughout and assess the situation. I didn't do any of these and I damaged the board. Secondly, understand the circuit properly. Had I done this, I wouldn't have even had to solder the board. Let me explain. In part one, I drew this diagram. I then measured these voltages. How is DAVD 3.3 volts if it's connected to a 1.2 volt reference? How is DV ref 1.22 volts using this voltage divider? It makes no sense. When it comes to the part of the board I spent time troubleshooting and soldering, it gets worse. I thought this circuit had the video signals traveling through capacitors, through inductors, through these ESD diodes, and out these termination resistors. I figured that an ESD diode was faulty, pulling a signal line down to ground. This would cause a low voltage. Had I just measured the ESD diodes with my multimeter in resistance in diode mode, I could have ruled this out. Even then, I decided to remove the capacitors to isolate the signals. But these are connected to ground, not the signal. Removing them would not show the fault at all. I was doomed from the start. Without an obvious board issue, I decided to research how the chip outputs video. So I opened the data sheet and started looking for anything useful. I first looked at the video processor diagnostic register. I found some interesting fields that can be used to test the video processor DAC. It looks complicated, but it's quite straightforward. Here's how to use it. Don't. Save yourself from this nightmare. First, the MBD MSR Diag Register doesn't exist. I googled it and got three results. The top one is my website. It could be a typo for GLD MSR Diag, but that register is reserved and not for use. Maybe it's a typo for the reserved test field I saw earlier? The bits line up, both reference bits 18 to 16, Setting these registers use both MSRs and memory mapping. The documentation on how to use these is fairly confusing. So I gave up and just modified the Linux driver to set registers for me. And it just made the screen go black. So what else is there to check? I found a register that lets you set an external DAC VREF. Changing it didn't help. The DAC power down register reports if it's powered down but I confirmed these were set properly. I found the GLCP DAC register. It has fields showing the DAC output voltage. It correctly reports the output as being low voltage. Well, that wasn't too helpful. Let's go back and measure the DAC VREF again. Here's a microscope shot of the circuit. Here's the components labeled again. And here are the signal lines labeled correctly. For now, let's focus on the DV ref line. DV ref measures 1.2 volts correctly, but Linux drops it to 0.8 volts. All along, I should have measured when the fault was active. Measuring the 3.3 volt rail shows it's 0.9 volts. As a quick check, I bridged the 3.3 volt rail to a nearby working rail. Surprisingly, this fixed the brightness. I checked the other side of the board and found this. A blown resistor. And a yellowed capacitor. Time to finally repair something. I used my soldering iron to remove the nearby capacitor and the resistor. I heated up one side of each component and forced that side upwards off the pad. Then I heated the other side up and pulled the components off. Next I ran a wire to replace the resistor. Then I cleaned up the spent flux. Do not do this. 
First, did I need to remove both components? Measuring the resistor's voltage drop would show if it's faulty. Secondly, I removed the components wrong. I forced heat through one end of the component. This let me lift one end up, but I risked pulling up the other end's pad. The proper way to desolder this is using a hot air gun, then removing the component using tweezers. Use the display before the fix. Here's the display after the fix. This fixed the brightness, but not the original issue. Okay, Linux works. Maybe the BIOS is broken? I opened the BIOS in a BIOS editor. I checked the default display output. It was set to VGA by default. I could try reflashing the stock BIOS, but what if the flash failed? I ordered some extra BIOS chips to flash instead. Okay, so what about the Ethernet chip? I left a mess and broke a ton of pins. I managed to find a pin out of the chip. I overlaid the microscope photo on it. Using this I identified the broken traces. So I have six broken traces. One trace is just ground, five traces are data. These are all required. How will I fix this? I could run wires to the pins. Here are the traces before I ruined them. I overlaid the images which showed where some traces go. But some traces disappear under the chip. I had to remove the chip to fix these traces. So I blasted the chip with flux and hot air. It didn't lift after 40 minutes. I gave up and cleaned up my failure. I decided to practice on a test board instead. Within minutes I cleanly removed the giant chip. So I tried desoldering the ethernet chip again. This time it worked. Underneath the chip was my first attempt's dried flux. I did slightly melt the clock battery connector. I did a thorough clean up of the board. I also cleaned the chip itself. After all this work, I could finally see the traces. Wait, they go nowhere? I'm confused, what's happening here? The circle on the chip and the silk screen shape indicates pin one. No, the smaller circle and larger marking does. I should have looked at the top pins in the data sheet. These six pins to be specific. Here's my diagram from before, but fixed. Four traces are not connected. AVDD is for analog power. LWAKE is for wake on LAN. So here's my plan for repair. First, add new pads for AVDD and LWAKE. Second, cover exposed traces with solder mask. Third, resolder the chip. I'll do that next video. I took a month's long break. In that time my new BIOS chips had come. I decided I might as well flash one. I removed the old chip while the board was running, then inserted an empty chip in its place. FlashRAM managed to write and verify a stock BIOS image fine. But does it boot this image? Why yes it does. It even fixed video output. Here's the BIOS screen working. Here's Grub loading up. Here's Linux working. Success! Looks like the BIOS was broken. Except now I'm having RAM issues and the working Ethernet port has disappeared from Linux. And now keys on the right side of the keyboard fail to register presses. The RAM stick also fell out of the machine while it was running. 
the reset button is broken too. Looks like another year of debugging. Thanks for watching. Credits time. Thanks Caden Live, Audacity and Inkscape for helping me make this video. If you like this video, please consider going vegan. This video is dedicated to the public domain using the CC0 license. For more information on any of this, see the video description.